Oh, I am ready. I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. I, I love it. To be, I love when Holy Spirit come, comes. Uh, I believe, uh, I truly believe God has a purpose for this service. I, 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 I am waiting to the end. But sometimes he show up and he said, enough, enough my son. I want to serve. I want to touch my people. Hallelujah. I'm excited to be with you. Uh, yes, Pastor Eli, we'll go around the world. We will be in every nation. Even though we already been in more than 30 countries and every month we, we are in a different place we are flying to russia in two weeks august will be in russia september will be in germany october we're coming to nigeria for the glory night in uh, november we will do a crusade in ethiopia december we will be in other part of ethiopia doing crusades oh god is good he's in a good mood He's doing good things and this is the good news. Come on somebody. God is good. Maybe it will be a revelation for you but let me tell you something. God always in a good mood. He always in a mood to heal people, deliver people, set people free, save people. And this is the good news of goodness of God and His greatness, His mighty name amen uh, recently we came from Ethiopia and uh, in Dubai but in Ethiopia uh, I mean I have so much testimony so much stories to share uh, how power of God set people free and deliver people and heal them but one of the one of the uh, moment just catch my attention one of the lady was tied with chains for 20 years 20 years her legs arms she was tied with chains and ropes for 20 years somebody brought that girl to our crusade during the service power of God just hit that girl in a mighty way we prayed God deliver her by the end of this service uh, we, we told her parents to untie her they're like no way we cannot do this because you don't know what's going to happen we sit we, 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 told, we, we told them watch this untied her when they untied her she got totally delivered she starts singing worship songs at the stage and she said that she, when she was a teenage teenager she was in a choir singing the worship songs and she said I've been always want to be a worshiper I've been always want to be a sin, uh, sin to God so when devil you know just tied her with, with, with bondage and evil spirits for 20 years my eyes is a witness in front of everyone God deliver her and she start worshiping Jesus the mighty King I told the story this morning we came from Dubai it's Islamic countries a country and during our cruise, uh, conference one of the lady came from one of the Islamic countries I don't know there are seven of them uh, so she flew from different country she never heard about Jesus what happened with her in her city bump was explored and half of her body was numb so she opened Facebook and she saw advertisement of healing deliverance conference so she flew from her country to that conference during the service the Holy Spirit touch her and heal her completely so she start hearing seeing the body become normal during the service nobody pray for her nobody I did not pray for her 
I was preaching gospel and I was preaching about the power of God that God himself touched her, heal her, restore her. She came after the service to the pastor and she said, I want to have that Jesus that you guys are preaching. This is what I'm talking about. When God show up, when the power comes, come on, everything bows. That's what we are desperate to see and this is what I believe that the church in the last days will be glorious full of spirit and power and fire that people that was my desire from the beginning when I when I gave my life to Christ I, I, I told Jesus this is my true story this is my testimony my wife is a witness I'm glad she's with me with my daughter here today uh, I, I told God, I said, I don't want to be normal Christian. I do not want to be normal. Because I was so in, on fire and people start coming to me and they say, wait six months, wait eight months, you will become normal like everybody else. I said, God, I don't want to be normal. No, this is not. This is not the price that you pay for my soul. I believe everything in this book, everything to the, to everything what you're saying in the book of Acts, I want to see in my life. I will, that's my prayer. I will say, God, take me all. I want to be available for you. Whatever you want from me, transform me, change me, deliver me, set me free, uh, equip me, send me. But I want to see this book alive in my soul, in my body, in my mind. I want to see everything what you wrote in this book. That's my prayer request. And let me tell you, it's still happening until this, till this day. That's a process. That's a process of deliverance. <laughs> hallelujah say God I am ready I want to be available for you yes father we give you praise and glory in this place right now manifest your power your glory and we give you the praise Holy Spirit this is your platform and I'm yours use me speak through me equip these people set us free bring us to the knowledge let the spirit of wisdom and revelation rest upon us this day. We receive this by your grace and we praise your name and only your name above all names. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Oh, expect something is going to happen. I want to I wanna read John chapter 1 from the message translation. If you have a Bible, please open with me, uh, John chapter 1. Uh, I, I love second service because uh, the biggest problem I have, I'm struggling when I'm limited. When people telling me you have only 30 minutes or 40 minutes, that's it, I cannot preach and believe me I'm not Apostle Paul Apostle Paul was preaching till the morning and that guy was died fall off from the window so I'm not I'm not there yet but I'm in the process <laughs> you know <laughs> so that's why I love second service because there is so much more in me to release and I want to release. I want to release and I believe you will be blessed. God is about to do something. John chapter 1 verse 6. If you dare with me from message translation, I want to read 1-6. Uh, follow me please. There once was a man, his name John, sent by God to point out the way to the life light. Hear this, he came to show everyone, say everyone. everyone. 
He came to show everyone where to look. Second, who to believe in. John was not himself the light. He was there to show. He was there to show. He was there to show. He was there. He was there. That would catch my attention. He was there. He was there. It's a place where God placed him. He was there. Can you say with me, I want to be there? Yes, I want to be there. He was there. Right place, right time, right message. Right place, right time, right message. I want to be there. Come on somebody. That's your purpose. That's your purpose. I want to be there. Why? To show to show the way to the light. I want to be there to show the way to the light. Basically he was saying to help people, to show people how to get there. To show people how to get there. So Bible says there once was a man, his name is John, sent by God. That was my prayer from the beginning when I gave my life to Christ in 2002, 16 years ago. I prayed to God and I said, God, I want to be sent by you. I got this revelation from the beginning. I believe many people, they, 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 uh, they start the ministry in a wrong time with the wrong character. So sometimes they are in the right place but wrong time. So we need to be sensitive to that moment. We really need to wait upon the Lord. We really need to allow God make sure He equip us to the moment when you know that you know that you know that He is going in front of you. He's sending you because when He sends you, you will have a message, you will have a place, you will have a character, you will have anointing, you will have power, you will have fire, you will have zeal, you will have passion. No one can stop you. No one can stop you. No circumstances, nobody when you know that God is sending you you have to understand it's a process process of what watch this the first thing what Bible says about the John that John uh, the Bible says that he came to show watch this he came to show not himself he came to show not his talent he came to show not his gift who he is how he can preach how he can minister how he can heal that's not the main point bible says that he was there to show everyone where to look not on himself that's maturity that's character that that's 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 the, that's how you know who you are in Christ when I live no more and he lives through me to show where to look not on himself you know many times we do something for God we preach we teach we sing we whatever we do but deep in our heart deep in our heart we really want wants people to see us like how good I am how talented I am how gift I uh, gifted I am you know like watch how can I how, how can I preach watch how can I do sermons how watch how how, how, how much wisdom I have or knowledge I, I have let me tell you something the biggest thing that you can do is just to be available for the Holy Spirit just to be empty for the Holy Ghost to use you to use your body to use your mind then, then 
your skills your gifts your talents will have a purpose and meaning and values so best thing what we can do through that process is allow God to deliver us that's the process to show everyone who to look not to ourselves you know when I gave my life to Christ I you know what I what, what I start I start with a drummer I'm a musician myself I play by the way I play every instrument every instrument I'm writing albums right now and I write songs and music and I produce the music I play all the instrument that's my gift by the way I'm I'm, I'm writing the book too so uh, it's, it's gonna come out by the end of this year it's gonna call predestined you need to get that book it's about my life story with the revelation and renewing of the mind and to know your purpose in the will of God here on earth as it is in heaven so this is just small commercial uh, so when I gave my life to Christ you know I start as a drummer no, not, nothing wrong you you are the best drummer I ever seen this guy just amazing uh, but I was playing you know a little bit just and uh, and and, and the, the, there was a small group you know just the guitar keyboard man and drums nothing else it was a small church and uh, and can you imagine I was the the leader of the group before and when I gave my life to Christ God put me in inside of that thing you know uh, just to observe and uh, you know not to have attention to my, uh, on myself just watch people and play and uh, there was a anointing woman of God was leading the worship but she got pregnant and she needs to leave and then pastor have uh, two choices uh, one of the choice it was me and another choice was somebody else so he was choosing between who's going to be the next worship leader and you know I thought come on <laughs> I, I, I can do anything here at the platform. I can write songs, sing and lead. I grew up at the stage, okay, all my life. So I was like, come on, I can do better than this person. And I thought, pastor will choose me. But this is what happened. That another person called me and said, I need to come to your house. I said, come on come to my house so when that person came to my house I don't want to mention the name uh, because maybe that person will watch this <laughs> it's a blessed blessed person anointed by anointed by God by God so that person came to my home and said to me you know I was praying and God spoke to me that I will be the next worship leader Oh, I was about to say, like, you know what? I was prayed last night. <sighs> Come on, I was spending time with the Holy Spirit all night. And the end of the night, in the end of the, you know, my devotion, uh, angels came to me, Gabriel, with a message. And he told me, no son, you will be the next worship leader. I didn't say that bless should be the name of the Lord I didn't say that but I was about to say that so I said okay if truly God spoke to you that you will be the greatest next worship leader fine do it I will continue to play drums but when I came to my room at night to pray because I was waking up three o'clock in the morning every single night to seek the Lord Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said son it's not about gift it's about character if you will know what I'm preparing you for I don't need another musician I need the man with vision in mission with purpose that he will use whatever gift he has with the right attitude, inheritance, integrity. 
It's about attitude, your character. Then Holy Spirit told me, he said, now, I said, God change me, whatever it takes, you know, just get this stinky character out of my, out of my life. He said, then watch what you have to do. Now, all the ideas that you have have to build the worship team. I want you to help that person to do exactly the way you want it to do in the team. Ah. Don't you ever ig ig ignore the process. That's the most important moment in your life. Because he doesn't want another man who know how to preach. He wants you to be there with the right attitude, right moment, right place, right message. Not just to carry the message but to become a messenger. To have a message that your life will present that message. That through your life you can show where to look, who to believe in and how to get there. Never forget one time uh, before I start international ministry, uh, I start, started in 2010 but I gave my life in 2002 and uh, for seven years, seven years my wife is a witness, for seven years I, I'm, I'm, I continued, uh, I'm continuing to do this uh, by now but there then I had more time uh, because I did not travel so much. So I was serving the local church and I become one of the pastors in the local church. But I was withdrawing myself every single month, every single month uh, to the mountains and spend time with God for three days. Every single month. Sometimes we didn't have any money at all. I borrow money to pay for that room just to go and be with God. It, it was happened every single month, months to months, months to month. And I remember one night I was there seeking the Lord, dwelling in His presence in the middle of the night when Holy Spirit just came to my room. And I saw a vision and He said to me, He said, I want you to see your end from this moment. I want you to see your funeral. I want you to see your day when you die. Some of us already got scared. But we're never gonna die. Come on. We're never gonna die. It's a transition from glory to glory. From life to life. Don't worry about that day, that day will come anyways. Sooner or later. So we need to be prepared for that day. Are you with me? So Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, I want you to see your day of your funeral. What do you want? And I mentioned three things. This is the true story. I said, I, was, I start thinking about my end, you know, like 100 years ahead and <laughs> I, I saw that everything is done already and, 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 and I saw everything what God was about to do through my life. I'm not gonna say this to you because you will be jealous. So um, I, I, I saw that day, I start, start like imagine that day, have that image inside of me and first thing I said to God, I said number one what I want that at my funeral nobody will cry this is what I want ah not not this not this hold on hold on number number one I said to God you know what I want to preach my last message this is the God is my witness I said to him I want to preach my last message I want to sit down on my chair wave to everyone and say I see you there and go. 
I said that's my request I want to preach my last message I don't want to die in a car accident you know uh, uh, through I don't know somewhere in the air with airplane crash no 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 no. I said no sickness uh, I want to preach my last message full of strength full of power full of passion preach my last message put the microphone say I see you everyone there breathe out and there that's my first request second one I said God I want no one cry on my funeral no one everyone I want them to rejoice to see the fruits and give praise to you for my life that's my second request and I said the last one I want everyone to wear white clothes not the black clothes I don't understand when on a funeral people wear black thing you know just come with black pants black short I said on my funeral I want everyone I'm telling this now that camera will record so after the 100 years I don't know if we we'll still have the same cameras whatever but but I want them to remember remember not my enemies but their children um, remember that they need to wear white clothes at my funeral that was my three requests to Jesus but then he shut my mouth this is the true story the presence of, was, uh, of God was so heavy in my room and he said you want to see this I said yes he said then let me tell you how to get there do you want to know he said when person is dying what he is thinking what he is saying let me tell you when you or somebody is dying they will never think what house they lived what kind of car they drove how much money they had they will think have they used the time have they used the house that they live have they used the money that they had have they used the that the gifts he he said to me I want you to think right now the most valued things in life there is a principle in life principles he said I want you to think about those principles like this is your last day on earth now he said get those principles and now come back to your time where you are now and put those principles in front of you now and those principles will lead you and will take you there and we, when you're gonna get there you will protect your heart and your mind and your soul and your ministry in your kids life and he said you will see that end that you require it's a process it's a process and we need to go through that process that process will help you to have that belief system inside of you I said God what do you want me to do he said look Ezekiel chapter 3 I want to read quickly Ezekiel chapter 3 he said to the son of man eat what you see eat this book see through that process you have a choice through that process God give you choice 
to make. What you put in front of you, what you're gonna see and what you're gonna eat. That's a responsibility. That's a responsibility that will help you to grow in your character. I believe most of you, you love people who's responsible. Self-control, discipline. What is that? It's a fruit of your character through the process. I don't have time to share my story and all my process. I just want to give you some principles. But God says to Ezekiel, he said, son of man, I want you to, to eat what you see. And then he gave him instruction. He said, I want you to eat this book. Put this book in front of your eyes because the word of God has images. So I don't want to just fit myself with the Word of God. I want to become that Word. I want this Word to transform my mind. I want my mind to have God's thoughts. they God's images through this Word. So He said, I want you to eat this book. Get, get the, be responsible to choose every day to put this book in front of your eyes. And then He said, then go and speak to the family of Israel. As I opened my mouth, he gave me, he gave me the, the scroll to eat, saying, Son of, man, Son of man, eat this book that I give you. Make a full meal of it. So I ate it. It tastes so good, just like a honey. Then he told me, watch this. Son of man, go to the family of Israel and speak my message message so I, I I said God what do you want me to do he said I want you to take responsibility and I want you every day to dwell in my word until my word will become flesh in you and my word will reveal the truth and the truth will set you free and the truth will set you free will make you available for me to have a message see it's it's not about how what you speak or what you say it's about the character that carrying that message without compromise without compromise when your life when you stand firm when you are very strong in your values and principles and and character and and, and the more you dwell in the word the word will reveal you who you are in him and what is your name because when you go preach you you, you cannot go and preach someone else's message or you cannot go and pretend like you somebody you have to be you you have to be you where, where, where you find yourself in him through that process of reformation and transformation when the word become flesh when the word see you start thinking the way the way you, you you the word the word thinks you 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 start seeing the way word sees things you, you that word become flesh in you i never knew in my life that i will be in love with this book By the way, you know, in the beginning when I start seeking the Lord and thinking about worldwide ministry, God told me, He said, I will teach you to serve one person. And, uh, and uh, you want to see, you know, thousands and millions. And by the way, we're working to have a one million souls crusade. Uh, in, in Ethiopia but before you see those massive crusades and you know worldwide ministry he said to me I will teach you to see value one soul Come on now. Come on. I will te teach you small things have to be faithful Come on now. I do remember I said Natasha we're gonna go around the world because Jesus revealed to me we will be in every nations to preach the gospel of the kingdom and she said to me you know what Andre 
I think you should read at least one time Bible from the beginning to the end. And let me tell you something. I opened Genesis. I opened the Bible 16 years ago. And God is my witness. I never close this book till this day. And this book placed me in a position where I am now through the process. I remember one time I was flying from Kiev to New York and sitting at the airplane somebody before I left gave me a book called Man That Got Used. So I opened that book, start reading that book. When airplane was about to take off, one of the lady was sitting across an aisle seat. I love aisle seats, so I was sitting, you know, an aisle seats and then this, uh, have you called? Aisles. <laughs> and it was across me, one of, one of the Russian lady. And when the airplane was taking off, she started dying, like coughing, screaming, shaking, you know, like she was doing like this and I look at her because I was reading the book, man that got used, you know, and when I look at her, she's dying there and I decided I'll pray in the Holy Spirit and I start praying like God please touch this woman, you know, please and God spoke to me, he said I am the spirit, I need your body. So lay hands on her and I want you to pray for her. I said, no, Holy Spirit, you touch, you lay hands on her. That's how we pray. That's how we pray. God, please, you know, do something. He's like, come on. Do you believe what you're praying? You need to believe in Him. That's a belief system, that's your mindset. He said, if you believe I can do this, then lay hands and be available for me. I want to use you to heal this person. So I pray in the Holy Ghost, you know, the Shabra, but also Torah. Holy Spirit touch this woman. And the more I pray, the more I hear his voice. Stop praying. Look at this woman, lay hands and pray for her. But is any of you flights, uh, you know, you ever flew in an airplane, you know, when everybody's quiet and the plane is taking off, you know, and everybody just watching, you know, looking from the windows and so quiet. And then can you imagine this? Like God is saying to you, come on, pray and cause the demon out of that woman. But the, 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 the scary part, I was holding that book, man that got used. So I closed that book, put it away and start praying the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit touched this woman and a third time God just, you know, He said, look at this woman, lay hands and pray and command that spirit of death to go. So when you overcome the fear, anointing comes. Let me tell you from my own experience, I can tell you story to stories in Pakistan and Congo and different places where God, He was helping me to overcome the fear and then heaven was open and God put up His Spirit. When I overcome the fear, I felt boldness. Oh, like I see millions of people in front of me at the crusades, you know. This is just one little woman sitting there. But when I was praying for her, I felt like I'm praying for thousands with boldness and anointing. And by the way, when I lay hands on her, some, one of the girls was walking through the aisle, you know. And I was like, wait over there. I'm praying right now. Seriously, I scream like this because I cannot speak normal. I have to, you know, just shout. And I said, in the mighty, oh, no, no, that's not that. I said, listen to this. 
I don't have time to explain to you who am I, uh, who I am. I say it's not about me. It's about the one who I'm present right now, who to look for. You know what I'm saying? It's about the one who to look, who to believe in. In the place where I am right now to show the way. Come on somebody. In the place where I am right now to show the way. I was in that place. And, 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 and I said to this woman, I said, I want to pray for you. May I pray for you? She's like, because she couldn't speak. So I lay hands on her and I said, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command, because she will show a point on her heart. I said, the heart be healed right now. And you spirit of death, I cast you out in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When I release that, she's like, <gasps> and stop breathing. I got scared a little, little bit, you know, a little bit. Then I opened the book again and started reading that book. <laughs> Man that God used. Glory to Jesus. And I just, you know, looking at her. And then we had conversation and she said, young man, you have to listen. She said, I cannot, I cannot fly because of my heart problem. I have metal stick, metal thing, metal clap and whatever in my heart inside of my heart she said I signed the paper doctor paper that of my responsibility to fly to New York on my own responsibility because she said I want to see my daughter I didn't see her for 10 years so I signed the paper if something is going to happen with me I'm responsible for that so she said when the airplane was taken off I start my heart stopped and she said I lost my uh, hearing and I couldn't speak and I felt, I, she said, I seriously felt like I'm dying. And she said to me, I thank God that you was there. Come on somebody. She said, that you were there. That you were there in the right place. In the right time. With the right message. Come on. You were there. With the right place. With the right message. She said, I give praise to God for your life, for your life, for your obedience, for your obedience, I give praise. Hallelujah. Come on, we cannot ignore that process. What is that process? Just few things, few thoughts and we're gonna pray. When you dare in the right time with the right message, See, the Bible says those who are faithful in the small things. See, we're always ignorant of those small things. Because we think that what could happen through those small things, it doesn't matter. What, what this thing has to do, has something to do with my purpose, with my calling. That's the way we think but you must understand that God desire your purpose more than you that's the reason you exist on earth so we always tell God God I want to know my purpose he said back to you you have to understand that's the reason why I sent you to earth it's not about purpose it's about character that will help you fulfill that purpose are you with me because gift will lift you up but only character will keep you there so it's not about the pur pur uh, purpose it's about character how you present the message how you live the life because your life will show the way not your words and you have to understand message bigger than your words you got to use your words to ex ex express to reveal the message but message it's your purpose it's your life it's your mindset it's who you are so two things what I want to mention before we pray Bible says those who are faithful in the small things. 
and another Bible says those who faithful in someone else ministry or business God is watching you in those two things we think that God is watching you when you pray to him that's the wrong definition of prayer because God is hearing you not in the prayer but the way you speak after the prayer because the way you talk after the prayer will reveal your mindset how much you are transformed how much you renew your mind the spirit of your mind so we think that God is watching us when we're here at the stage you know grab the microphone and and and, and, and when we know how to pray and praise and lift our hands and shout and scream and we know how to preach and release the word of God no he's watching you in those two things that matter for him it's faithfulness because faithfulness is the power of your discipline faithfulness is the power of self-control this faithfulness is at the part of your character if you faithful in the small things believe me the day will come you will be in the right place in the right time and God will use the mighty way and he will be make sure he can trust you believe me I met many young people they know me from the beginning they watching our ministry right now and they want to be in our place in our position escaping the process see when your church is praying for the thousands locally and and, and millions globally I'm, I'm I'm telling you it has something to do with this building with cleaning with cameras with faithfulness in the small things when no one sees you when everybody is eating at a restaurant you know seafood and shrimps and lobsters and you by yourself in this building you are cleaning this carpet this is where God is building your ministry your purpose in Jesus name and let me tell you the, 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 the anointing is growing there the power is growing there the purpose is growing there you grow in that mission you know you grow in that purpose in that character you become that believing system inside of you and when you're faithful in others When you start focusing in those two things, those two things you can fulfill when you continuously seeking His face through His Word. Because Him, Himself, will give you strength and passion and let me tell you you need more strength in the small things than strength for the big things because in the small things you hope you have to overcome your desires you need to have a power over yourself this is so powerful let me tell you something in the small things you need to have a power overcome your own desires so you need more strength from God more passion from God more zeal from God with the small things then when everybody knows you watching you reading your books and your flow because people is helping you but with the small things you need God's strength to do it not people's strength you know what I'm saying you need to see that God is on your side is helping you and watching you in those small things and 
and he's watching careful how you do ministry in someone else I truly blessed by this ministry I'm telling you with all of my heart I love hungry generation I believe God has a big purpose for this local church this local church more than this walls this local church it's a gifts purposes you know the, the the lives of these people who will think globally and manifest his kingdom in every corner of this earth so I truly believe in this ministry and I'm glad to be part of friendship with these leaders and pastors and let me tell you something if you really want to grow you need to have that right environment you need to have that soil where you can grow and I'm prophesying to you I'm declaring the word you need to plant like your life in this soil in this environment and start with the small things start with the small things and believe me those small things will take you to the big things to the higher level in the purpose of Jesus Christ in your life small things and the ministry in others you know churches and and businesses whatever God place you so in the end I want to mention this where you are right now that's exactly the place what God what, what God place you there this is your place now so my question to you what do you see from that place how do you do things from that place what comes out from you from that place and what kind of message you carry from that place God I deserve more oh I don't have time I don't have time another time I deserve more more they don't see my potential they don't know how I can do things where you are that's the place will brought you through the self-control and discipline in your own time and life let me tell you that that where you are right now that's exactly the place if you will recognize you will use your time right for that place your time with the right message what is your life preaching what kind of message your life brings on what kind of message you speak from the position where God placed you now with the small things but let me tell you if you will be faithful if you will be faithful God will allow you to find yourself to become you you know that the time will come you will know what you know that God is going in front of you he's sending you you will know without anybody else you will see his hand upon your life because you wait upon him doing small things faithfully and doing small things in others life you will see the hand of God you will feel you will know because he will firm the message in you that you will carry it with your character without compromise and then you will stand in front of your people and he said speak my word speak my message and believe me in the end of your time and the end of your time people will say what we read about John the Bible says that there once was a man his name is Andrew and Peter and Luke and Brian and Mary and Natasha and Yelena sent by God 
sent by God, not by man. Truly God was with them. Truly God was with her. Emmanuel, God is with us. Then your message will have a meaning. Your message will have a power. Your message will increase anointing. Your message will show you open heaven. You will see signs and wonders will follow you. You don't have to change those things. It will be part of your message. Truly, truly there was a man. His name is John sent by God out the way to the life light. He came to show everyone where to look, who to believe and how to get there. Come on, let's pray in the Holy Ghost everyone. Let's pray in the Holy Spirit. Let's pray in the Holy Spirit. Open your mouth and say, Holy Spirit, take me there. Take me to that place. Take me to that place. There is a place in this world for you. There is a place for this church. There is a place for your purpose. There is a place for your destiny. There is a place where God will use you in a mighty way to show the way, to show everyone who to look and who to believe in. Father, I give you praise right now in this room. I give you praise right now in this service. I give you praise in Jesus. We may, we, 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 we magnify your name above all names. If it's possible, everyone in this room, just open your mouth and pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray loud. Release the prayer. Release the spiritual energy from inside to out in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel, and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.